Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar. The topic this time is how to make social media work for your law firm, key concepts and best practices for attorneys. This webinar is hosted by the ABA Legal Technology Resource Center. Speaking today will be Mark Jacobson and Brian Letus from Fine Law. The Legal Technology Resource Center is an ABA member benefit provided by the Law Practice Management section of the ABA. The LTRC has been providing lawyers with legal technology guidance for more than 25 years. You can find a variety of legal technology articles, guides, videos, and other resources on our website at www.lawtechnology.org or at our blog, www.lawtechnologytoday.org. As Fine Law's Senior Director of Strategic Development, Mark Jacobson leads the development of products and services that help law firms achieve their marketing objectives. Before joining Fine Law, Mark was a pioneer in the software and website development sectors and is a regular speaker in industry conferences on topics such as digital marketing strategy, website development, project management, online learning, interactive software, and search. Fine Law Senior Strategic Developer Brian Letus has a deep and broad expertise uh, in the legal marketing realm, including social media organization, uh, internet product development, search engine optimization, and much more. As a senior member of Fine Law's Strategic Development R&D team, his duties include testing and experimenting with pro and producing the latest online marketing techniques available for attorneys. Thank you all for joining us. We'll now begin the webinar. Great. Uh, thanks, Josh, and welcome, everybody, to How to Make Social Media Work for Your Law Firm. Uh, I wanted to say just a little bit at the outset of uh, who this presentation is really targeted at. And that's not in any way to say that if you don't feel you're in this target, you, you can't be here. But uh, we're really focused today on those who are newer to social media or maybe those who made an attempt at it and felt like it just kind of struck out on that and, and uh, you know, maybe are having their doubts about whether it's really an effective technique for them to employ. And, and the orientation we're taking to this presentation is really social media as a client development um, a marketing tactic. Um, there are many other uses for social media in a, in a legal setting, but we're going to mainly be focusing on the business development uh, use case. So uh, Brian and I are from Fine Law, as Josh said, and our mission at Fine Law, and you can you know, see Fine Law at FineLaw.com, our mission is to help consumers understand their legal issues and connect uh, those consumers with lawyers who can help them solve their legal problems. And then sort of on the sort of flip side of that coin, we, we help lawyers connect with consumers that they're well qualified to help. And we have a variety of ways we do that. And you can learn more of the, about that if you're interested on lawyermarketing.com, the site you see on the screen now. Uh, so I'm Mark Jacobson. I won't redo my bio. All I'll say is uh, my job is really to try to develop new and better ways to help law firms connect with consumers they can help and to do that in a way that will help law firms grow their practices. OK, so here's our agenda today. Uh, we're going to begin with an overview of social media. And uh, I kind of think of this section as a presentation of the presentation as sort of making the case for social media. And this is especially for those of you who wonder, you know, does this even fit into you know, my client development activities? And I want to kind of buttress that case with some statistics we're going to walk through uh, that are really uh, quite compelling, I believe. Uh, talk a little bit about what we think a key principle lawyers have to keep in mind uh, if they're going to embark upon this social media journey, and that's really the strategy for lawyers, and that's really focused on one kind of core principle that I see a lot of law firms get wrong. And then I'll turn it over to Brian Letus, my colleague, and Brian will take us through in much more detail how to set up and establish that social media program and some best practices for getting off on, on the right foot. OK, so uh, when, when, when a lot of people think about social media, they, they think of you know, websites like those that are uh, indicated by the logos on the screen, you know, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google+, uh, you know, sites where you connect with other people, where you share things, where you discuss things, a more interactive experience. Uh, maybe, maybe some of you think it's not something I do, it's something my kids do. It's, uh, it's something they do, and I, you know, I, I hope against hope they don't destroy their, their employment prospects forever by some of the photos they put out on their Facebook account. Uh, maybe some of you kind of along those same lines think it's, it's for, it's, social media is really for my personal life, uh, not my professional life, with the possible exception of LinkedIn. 
and uh, you know a lot of we hear from a lot of attorneys that they just think it's a fad it's it's just not worth their time um, I have a sort of a personal perspective on, on this question kind of based on how long I've been in the digital marketing space I, I actually started getting involved in in the World Wide Web when the World Wide Web was first established back in the you know, early 90s by uh, Tim Berners-Lee and I've been involved with law firms marketing digitally since the mid 90s and uh, where social media is at somewhat reminds me of kind of uh, law firms and their attitudes toward establishing a web presence, building a website back in say, 1995, 1996, 1997. Uh, back then, most firms considered the web, you know, maybe a fad, maybe a novelty. Few, if any, considered it a legitimate channel for business development. But there, there were a few firms who who kind of decided to. And you know, kind of go boldly forth, nevertheless, to make a bet on the web, to to establish that fledgling web presence and start building that over time. And probably a lot of their colleagues at the time thought they were crazy, or at least wasting their time. But what I've seen from those sort of early movers is they they gained a tremendous advantage by uh, committing and betting on on their website early because they now have an age domain. They have tremendous trust in Google. They have a wonderful natural uh, profile of inbound links from other sites. And what that translates into is great results uh, on circuit Google and other search engines and a real impact to their business. I mean, those firms do great. Sometimes the sites aren't even that impressive, but they do great. Well, I, I think even though social is different in a, lot of, in a lot of ways, I think just in terms of where it's at as a marketing tactic for law firms, I think it's in a very similar place in that you know very few firms are willing to commit to it and most don't really get how it would work and yet I believe those who who really uh, make that bet on social media and who do it in the right way and that's very important are going to put themselves in a position to potentially see those same kind of benefits to their business now um, to, 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 to tell you why I think that way I want to kind of begin with with how consumers find attorneys. And um, we, we at Fine Law, we do this research uh, every year or two because we're really interested in this question. It's kind of core to the information we present to the marketplace. Other companies uh, do this research as well. And, and what we see time after time when we do this research is by far and away the preferred method for consumers to use to find an attorney is either to already know that attorney or to get a referral from somebody they trust, from their friends, their family, coworkers. Um, you know, what we've seen is that's anywhere from 60 to 70 percent of consumers look at that as kind of their go-to or their preferred method to find an attorney. Uh, LexisNexis has done some research where they found that 73 percent of adults who sought to hire an attorney cited asking friends and family. So this this is a you know a very sort of powerful tendency on the part of consumers and. From you know, from what I've observed, I think attorneys get this. Uh, they they get that this is the way consumers like to find attorneys, and that's why one of the primary marketing tactics for law firms, from really the beginning, has been has been networking. You know, getting out into your communities, joining uh, organizations like the the Rotary or the Kiwanis Club or Chamber of Commerce, and. Uh, uh, making connections with people, engaging with people, building your network, and 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 the, and the reason you do that, of course, is when when people in that network have a legal need, or their friend, or their family, or a coworker has a legal need, you want them to think of you. You want to have established that connection so they think about you and make a referral to you. This just energizes and drives conversions. Now, over the years. The way this has happened has evolved. You know, different tools are at play: telephonic communication, electronic communication, etc. But a fundamental activity is the same, and the fundamental goal is the same: making connections, establishing relationships, building that network so you're top of mind when people have a legal issue. So, you know, with that set up, I, I kind of have a question for you to consider, which is, uh, what does a law firm do when they engage in social media? What mysterious, mystic activity is taking place. Well, what I, what I would suggest law firms do is they get out into an online community, they make connections, they engage with people, they build their network again. So when people have legal needs, that law firm is top of mind when those referrals happen in an online setting. 
So fundamentally, you know, conceptually, it, what is happening in social media from kind of a business and client development perspective is exactly what law firms have done for years and years and years in a physical setting, which is, uh, and, and all law firms really need to do is just sort of expand their paradigm so they sort of take that same skill set they often use in a physical setting and move it into an online social media setting. Uh, and, and that's why I'm always a little bit surprised when I you know, hear firms say, I just don't get social media. I don't know how that would ever apply to me. Well, uh, if you really just look at it in that way, you realize, hey, it's something I've been doing all along. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, I just don't believe the dynamics are the same. I don't think the referrals happen in the same way. You know, physical networks are just different. Well, uh, research uh, actually would suggest uh, otherwise. According to a recent ABA study, uh, asking consumers how they find lawyers, 20% already uh, would say they would consult Facebook, their friends and family networks in, in Facebook. 15% uh, would consult a blog, and a blog really is the, sort of the beginning of social media, and a blog at its best is a highly interactive medium. And 9% uh, would consult Twitter. So these referrals are happening. Uh, these friends and family networks where there's trust and where there's referrals, they're, they're out there and they're growing uh, steadily. So I want to kind of build on that a little bit with some statistics that uh, I think reinforce the pervasiveness of social media and the impact it can have in getting people to know about your firm and the message that you want to send to the market. And the uh, first number I want to give you is 65%. 65% that is the number of U.S. Internet users who are already on social media. And to give you the raw number that equates to, that's 165 million people. Uh, this next number to me is even more interesting, 50%. 50% are the number of people or the percentage of people that check their social media networks first thing every morning. That's 83 million people across the United States who check their social media networks first thing in the morning. And, and to me, when I look at that statistic, the really interesting thing about that is for those people, social media has become part of the core, fundamental um, fabric of their lives. I mean, it's become very deep-rooted. And I think you know, probably that skews to younger uh, people, but, but those people are entering the workforce and they're becoming your future client base. And then the last number I want to look at on this slide is 42. 42 is the number of people social media users will tell about good service. One of the really interesting things about social media is the manner in which messages spread. Uh, a lot of the you know, friction or obstacles to message, messages spreading that exist in the physical world don't exist in the same way you know, in the online world. So messages spread really widely and really rapidly. And, uh, you know, big companies certainly get this. They, they get the importance uh, of social media. They get the way messages spread. They also get another key factor that's sort of at play here, which is we've become a society where our mobile devices, our smartphones, our tablets are with us all of the time. And, and uh, we, you know, we're looking at them through almost every activity of life. Uh, and, and, and the way I, you know, the way you can sort of get an idea of how big companies are viewing this is if, if you sort of look back at the Super Bowl that just took place, and I kind of watch this like a lot of people. I look forward to seeing the ads at a Super Bowl, and uh, uh, one thing that was noted was that 50% of the ads presented at this year's Super Bowl uh, included a Twitter hashtag. And uh, the reason it included a Twitter hashtag is because companies know people are sitting there watching the game with their tablet or with their smartphone next to them. They know they will immediately engage in social media. And if they use that hashtag to respond to that commercial or that product or service, you get instant, hugely valuable promotional buzz and spreading of your message uh, through social media in, 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 in real time. So it's a very powerful thing. Um, a few other numbers to just further sort of reinforce just the pervasiveness of, of social media. So. Given the number of users I kind of just talked about, it's not surprising there's about 500 billion word of mouth impressions on social media, so a huge amount of messages bouncing around social media. Uh, but this next uh, uh, factor I think is even more interesting. Uh, 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 of course, social media is built on the idea of networks. 
and networks have really interesting properties uh, that relate to how messages spread. Now, I'm sure you've all heard the phrase six degrees of separation, uh, uh, and, and maybe some of you believe that's true. A lot of people don't believe it is true, but actually many academics who focus in this field of study have established it is in fact true that I, for example, could be connected to anybody else on the planet throughout most six connections. Well, not too long ago, Facebook did their own study for the degrees of separation within Facebook. And what they found that within Facebook, there are only 3.74 degrees of separation between any two of their over 1 billion members. Um, and uh, you, you may say, well, that's, that's kind of interesting. I could maybe use that as a nice little tidbit at my next uh, cocktail party or something. But, but it actually has really huge practical implications. Uh, recently, um, Sheryl Sandberg, who is a COO of Google, she's in the news a lot, so you've probably heard of her, uh, she uh, gave a speech in which she said that when a business uh, uh, gets four people within Facebook to share its brand message, to share a message it wants to send out to the marketplace, that message will reach over one million Facebook users. I mean, that is, that is the exponential power of the way messages spread, the way you can connect with people in social media. And then finally, when people get those messages, they trust them. 90% of the people trust uh, the opinions of the people they know online. Uh, so it's not like there's a lower level of trust in social than there is in the physical world. It's substantially similar. So uh, I want to kind of sum up the, the case <laughs> I've been making here. Um, first of all, people like to find attorneys through friends and family. And in today's world, how increasingly do you access friends and family well, through social media, through Facebook, through um, uh, Google Plus, uh, maybe through Twitter to some extent. Uh, social media also gives you access as users to thousands and upon thousands of friends and family networks, those networks that are the key to getting referrals based on how people hire attorneys. Uh, Social media has become the modern way of networking. It doesn't replace physical networks, but it augments them, and in many ways, it's more powerful than physical networks. And 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 uh, social media has properties that give you the ability to push your message out and have it spread in ways that it, it, it never could in the physical world. So you know, I kind of look at all those factors from where I sit, and I say, wow. I mean, every trend, the numbers the power of social media, uh, the way people like to hire attorneys, uh, all kind of adds up to this really needs to be seriously considered as a part of how I as a law firm market my services. Uh, and, and I'd say unless, unless you're a firm that's thinking of sort of leaving, you know, closing down or attorneys leaving the profession in you know, the next three or four years, this is going to become such a factor in how people connect, share information, do recommendations, referrals, that any firm has to seriously consider how this fits within their marketing mix. So hopefully you found that somewhat persuasive. And uh, you sort of wonder, well, OK, I'm, I'm willing to give it a try, or I'm willing to consider it. Uh, you know, How should I implement a program? How should I start? Well, I want to begin by just giving you one simple principle uh, that I see ignored uh, by many firms that, that sort of make that determination to engage in social. And as a result, it undermines their whole program. I want to give you that principle so you can at least sort of have the right approach in mind. And then I'm going to, I'm going to turn it over to Brian, and, and he's going to go into much more detail about how to build an effective program. And that simple principle uh, that I want to give you is, 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 is really this. Interact, don't broadcast. Uh, when we see a lot of firms make their initial foray into social media, they often think, well, this is, you know, this is just another form of advertising. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to pepper the market with my message in the same way I do with my yellow page ad, with my billboard, with, with, with whatever sort of one-way advertising I've traditionally done. Uh, that method does not work in social media. And I'm going to give you a couple of examples to show you how it is uh, uh, really almost nonsensically ineffective. Uh, here's a firm that probably made a determination that we need to make social media you know, part of our mix. We need to you know, get a Twitter account. We need to get out there and start you know, uh, getting our message out through these social media properties that are becoming so important. Uh, 
And uh, what I want to do as I describe what they're doing to you is sort of take what they're doing on Twitter and sort of translate that into what it would look like in the physical world. And that really shows just why it's so ineffective. Uh, so the first thing uh, we highlight here is this, kind of this post that consists entirely of just this really messy URL, probably links to some story about the firm. Um, and if you sort of take what the firm is doing here and you translate it to the physical world, it would be as if I, as an attorney, would walk into a uh, chamber of commerce um, uh, mixer and uh, you know step into the room, uh, speak out a couple lines of gibberish, and then turn on my heels and walk out the room. And then, and, and as I'm walking away, congratulate myself on, boy, that was some good business development activity. I'm going to definitely get referrals from that. I mean, it's nonsense, but that's, in effect, what happened here. Uh, the second one is almost as bad. Uh, in this case, the firm is yelling out, because capital, the convention of, uh, you know, on the Internet is all capitals, equates to yelling your message. They're essentially walking into that room, yelling out their message that uh, we're emerging and you should read our press release and again turning around and walking out the room and you know and from my point of view irrationally thinking that that is going to lead to a connection or a potential referral down the road it just isn't going to work because this firm is broadcasting they're not interacting it's really important to understand that social media does not work like traditional advertising. And traditional advertising, whether it's a law firm or any other kind of business, uh, the message is sort of one way. I send my message out to the market. Hopefully I've written and prepared a, a good, effective message the market will respond to. Hopefully I've targeted my uh, audience well, and I send that message out and then hope for a response. Social media is very different. Social media is all about interacting with your marketplace. Uh, if I send a message out to the market, I want the market to talk back to me. I want to start a conversation. I want to engage. And I want that to evolve into a relationship where at some point they become part of my network and they become part a referral source. Uh, and it doesn't really matter to me whether message emanates from me to the market or the, or the message emanates from the market to me. Either way, I want a conversation to occur. There's another important aspect of social media that I think firms who choose not to participate uh, need to take very seriously which is it's not only a question of the firm talking to the market or the, and the market talking back to the firm, it's the market, your clients, your prospect, the prospects talking amongst themselves. And if you as a firm say, I'm just going to stay on the sidelines, I'm not going to participate in social media, you, you in effect become oblivious to that conversation. And it's happening whether you know it's happening or not. And people are saying good things about you. People could be saying bad things about you. People could be saying inaccurate, unfair things about you. And you aren't even there to manage the situation. So that's a critically important sort of dynamic to understand in social media. It's just what's illustrated on this graph, so, or I mean on this chart. So, I want to show you just a really quick example of what social media done right looks like. And um, this is from Sokolov, and I'm sure many of you have heard of them. You know, big firm does a huge amount of marketing, uh, spends a lot of money on marketing. But what they're doing here, any firm could do. I mean, this is just, uh, just social relationship building 101. And you can see what they're getting messages from their marketplace, you know, from, from potential clients, maybe from clients, and they're talking back to them. They're responding in a positive way. Uh, they're building the relationship, they're making connections, and ideally those, those individuals, that those relationships, those discussions are happening with will evolve you know, into the firm's referral network down the road. Uh, it's just a matter of employing the same principles in a social setting that you would in a physical setting. So um, with that kind of as a high-level principle, what I want to do now is turn it over to Brian, and he's going to walk you through a lot more detail about how to establish that social media program. Thank you very much, Mark. Uh, my name is Brian Letus, and I work for Fine Law along with Mark in our research and development group. Uh, basically, my charge at Fine Law is to experiment with the newest forms of online marketing for uh, small law firms and solo attorneys, and then uh, deliver that out to the marketplace, uh, the most efficient and valuable uh, online marketing solutions possible. So just like Mark said earlier with social media, uh, you want to interact and not broadcast. And a lot of uh, firms that we work with and attorneys that we work with 
always have trouble just making that initial leap into social media. They just don't know what to post about, don't feel comfortable. And the advice that we give more often than not is just a, another simple mantra is uh, do good. You want to be an involved but a, a responsible social participant with your campaigns. And so what I'm going to do is go over some principles here at the high level, the 10,000 foot level of, that could be applied to any social media profile or account on the web. And then we'll delve into some of the more uh, specific and uh, important properties for attorneys today. So with this do good mantra, uh, you want to create conversations and, and be involved. So some examples of that are to discuss local stories. Um, dealing with small uh, law firms and uh, solo attorneys, uh, it's really about the local angle for them and, and getting to know people in their area. And just like at that Chamber of Commerce meeting, you can walk in and talk about the weather or anything that's going on in the local area. That will immediately establish you as a local reference. And then if you can follow that up with maybe some uh, Q&A, or FAQs, top 10 things to do after a car accident, for example, that will really help uh, round out your, uh, your, your experience and also the experience of those that are following you and ingesting your content. In addition, you want to create awareness. Uh, create awareness about yourself means being present. Just like Mark said earlier, you don't want to bro constantly broadcast. You want to engage. You want to be there, be part of the community. And then also the most important piece is to be real. Be yourself, let your own personality shine through, uh, but be responsible at the same time and engage. Just like this um, cocktail party here, this picture of the cocktail party here, people look like they're seeing eye to eye, they're engaging with each other, they're not just broadcasting and leaving. So like Mark said earlier again, uh, it's, it's a lot like the, the traditional, um, you know, sort of meet up, uh, greeting, sort of cocktail party, word of mouth experience that you've been doing um, throughout your entire business career. So with this, it's very important to engage. You can't just uh, broadcast and, and not interact with people. You want to engage. You want to be compelling. Best way to do that is to share information. Perhaps it's a legal opinion. Perhaps it's uh, information that somebody had already shared and then you decided to uh, reply to them and, and thank them for their opinion or offer additional information. You could even comment on um, something that somebody else has posted or shared to show that uh, you know about this topic, you're engaged, and you're a part of that, that community and, and that type of uh, information or practice area. And then when you share, uh, sharing links and images in today's world is, is a very important aspect of social media. The images will entice people to spend more time with your content, to click through with your content and engage more, remembering you more. And then the links can offer additional information, which can build you up as a, a credit, credible, uh, trusted uh, authority. And you can also even reference your own web properties and some examples to drive um, leads back to your, own, to your own website if you have one. Finally, uh, each social media property, and we'll talk about a couple of uh, those in a, in a minute here, has their own sort of uh, vernacular, if you will. Uh, you wouldn't go into McDonald's and, and order a Whopper, you'd order a Big Mac, but it, it's a hamburger ac across the board. So with Facebook, you have like. On Google+, Plus, it's called plus wanting is the same as like. And then in uh, Twitter, for example, you can, you can retweet, which just means to reshare something. So we're going to go over these for each of the properties. Uh, for lawyers and law firms, especially those that are, are small uh, law firms and solo attorneys, um, we often recommend four uh, key properties in today's world. Uh, the first being Facebook, and then Twitter. LinkedIn, which is more of your traditional, uh, very professional network. It's not as ad hoc, uh, not as informal. And then finally, you have Google+, Plus, which is sort of the new kid on the block and is quickly becoming uh, a larger uh, conglomerate uh, and, and more important by the day. So we're going to delve into each of these properties and some uh, quick uh, best practices on each to get yourself set up and, and up and running. So Facebook, starting with Facebook. Facebook uh, is, is uh, very personal. It's, it's very informal. Uh, therefore, it does have a, a side that you can use for your, your law firm called a page. You can create a business page or a local page about your law firm and then act as that page and interact with individuals on Facebook. So you can keep your private and personal life separate from your professional life. Uh, you can share and interact and have different friends and sort of have a different uh, branding and reputation statement on Facebook through the use of a page. So that's what we recommend to most of our law firms here at Fine Law. Within Facebook, it's got its own specific vernacular. Um, sharing information is called a post. You can uh, share somebody else's post um, as your own. 
You can then like that post as, as a vote of confidence or trust or, or a small applause measure, if you will. You can comment and then you can also friend people, uh, which means they're allowed to receive information from you and vice versa. And then you can even subscribe to individuals uh, that wouldn't friend you. For example, uh, a celebrity you could subscribe to their, their feed on Facebook, if you will. There's a lot of secondary benefits with all of these social media properties. Uh, Facebook in particular offers good Google search visibility. Your Facebook page will be indexed by Google. And when somebody looks up your law firm name, typically they will find, if you have a website, your website, uh, perhaps some uh, professional profiles about you, and then also your Facebook page. So it's a great way to reinforce your brand and then control your reputation uh, within Google search results on that very first page. Facebook is also mobile dominant. It's the largest uh, application, it's the most popular application in the United States um, by far. Um, the majority of people walking around with uh, mobile phones and tablets today are using Facebook. Recently, Facebook uh, had a, a, an interesting statistic where it now has more mobile users than desktop or PC users for the first time ever. So people are using Facebook on their mobile devices, they're not leaving Facebook, they're interacting with friends, you can instant message people, you can now make free voice calls through Facebook in the US and Canada. So like Mark said earlier, you want to be there when the time is right. When it comes time to have a referral, you want to be able to be referred within Facebook, have a presence, because people are doing this instantaneously on their mobile devices, on the go, in the evening, and in the morning. Facebook also has a large uh, maps and local business presence uh, as well. It's got a local aspect to it. This is an example of uh, the Dolan Law Firm. Uh, this is their Facebook page. Um, they're doing a very good job. You can see they've sponsored a, a recent charity event, so you kind of get a sense that they're involved in their community. On the bottom, you can see that they have 132 likes. Uh, that's quite a good number for a, a page for a law firm. And additionally, you can see the map in the lower right-hand corner, and then the address, the phone number, and today's business hours in the lower left. And also within the About section, you get a link back to your website, which can then help your website's visibility in Google Search, as well as your Facebook page. We're going to move into Twitter now. Uh, Twitter is probably the most uh, informal of the four we'll discuss today. So it's probably best to use Twitter professionally. It's essentially a real-time short messaging system. Think of it as the ham radio of all of the social media properties today. It was originally intended to say, here's where I am and here's where, what I'm doing right now in real time so somebody can come meet up with me or follow my whereabouts. Uh, so within Twitter, what we recommend to our customers is to essentially create a profile and use that for your law firm. There is no page uh, side of Twitter. There, there's only sort of one side. If you're a very, very large brand, you can have a page, and this is something that's new and up and coming. Uh, but for small law firms and solo law firms, it's essentially just best to create a profile and use that professionally. The vernacular within Twitter uh, kind of means the same things as Facebook. A tweet is the same as a post. A retweet is a share. You can reply to somebody specifically uh, if you like uh, the information they've put out, and you can also mention them and then follow their feed as well as they can follow you. Uh, Twitter and Facebook and all of these properties track these statistics. So they track the number of tweets that you put out, the number of times your tweets have been retweeted, the number of times you're mentioned. And that sort of speaks to uh, your level of involvement and expertise and engagement, which uh, we'll, we'll talk about in a minute here. Uh, just like Facebook, there's a lot of secondary benefits. Again, uh, good Google search visibility. You get an additional page in Google search results uh, in addition to your website and your Facebook page uh, so that you can uh, properly brand yourself and, and sort of uh, you know, take advantage of that, of that shelf space on the first page of Google. It is also mobile dominant, just like Facebook. Uh, it's a great opportunity, just like all of these, uh, to sort of you know, control your reputation, your image, and your branding. And the key thing about Twitter that's unique from all of them is because it's informal, because it's short, real time, you can only type 140 characters, a very short message, you're, uh, you can essentially uh, get access to networks of expertise. Um, at the highest level, the President of the United States uses Twitter on a regular basis, members of Cong Congress, um, you know, pretty much uh, a lot of businesses use it today. And so by tweeting and sending a short message, somebody is much more likely and inclined to reply uh, to your short, short message rather than opening an email, uh, thinking of a draft to respond to it. So this is a great way to show that you are involved in a network of expertise and that you actually take the time to seek out additional advice 
and members of your community. So Twitter is great from that aspect. Uh, here's another example of the same law firm with their profile page on Twitter. You can see that they're following uh, 245 uh, different Twitter accounts. So within their Twitter news feed, they'll see updates from 245 different various individuals. And in tandem, they have 149 people following them. Now for a law firm, a uh, small law firm, solo attorney, that, that's a really great target. It's a great starting point. Uh, this is not a, a restaurant or a concert venue, so we're probably not going to see 10,000 followers or even 100,000 followers for, for any law firm or attorney. Um, you know, 100, 200, 300, up to 500 are, are great, excellent numbers. And you can see right here that this is the beginning of a, a great social media property account. It's got followers, and, and people are adjusting uh, what this law firm is putting out and paying attention. You can see in the bottom left that they are using images and videos, uh, just like we talked about earlier, to entice people to click through ingest the content, spend more time, uh, it gives, gives you uh, more opportunity to put your brand in front of them uh, and, and who you are. Uh, and then again, there's that link back to your website, uh, which can help, again, your website show up in Google search as well as your Twitter profile. Moving on to LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn is uh, the most professional of, of the four we'll discuss today. Uh, LinkedIn is, uh, think of it as, you know, not, not personal, always professional. It's, uh, it's like a, a business conference, essentially. Mostly a business-to-business -business network, and you want to use this as either a practitioner, individually, or as a law firm. And again, you can create a page for your law firm, and then also use the personal side to connect with uh, business colleagues, referrals, friends, that sort of thing. On LinkedIn, you have your own set of vernacular again, uh, sharing, commenting, liking, and following. Uh, friending on LinkedIn is called connecting, and then there's this new endorsement feature where if you worked with somebody in the past, you can endorse a specific skill uh, that they possess. Secondary benefits, again, include uh, Google search visibility. Uh, both your uh, personal and professional pages are indexed by Google and can show up there. Uh, so you can control your reputation, your image, and your branding. And then it can also function as a virtual professional referral network, uh, more so business to business than people going out there and, and seeking a law firm. So here's an example of uh, the same law firm on LinkedIn. You can see their, their summary details, the ability to connect with them, uh, their website link, and then their address as well. So finally, uh, Google Plus is the fourth property that we recommend to our customers. Google Plus is um, it's a bit of an animal these days. There's many facets to it. Uh, we'll discuss the social and the local aspect today. It's uh, both personal and professional, just like Facebook. So generally, we create, uh, recommend uh, creating a page and using a page for your law firm uh, or your business presence, and then also using the personal side as, as you. Uh, within Google Plus, you can uh, share information, post. Uh, liking, again, is called plus wanting. Um, you can comment. Um, create uh, your own authorship, establish yourself as the author of your own content on your website, and then you can circle, which essentially means uh, friending or connecting with somebody. Secondary benefits of Google Plus uh, pretty much go far beyond that of Facebook, LinkedIn, or Twitter. Because you're using Google's properties and you're directly communicating with them and sending them signals about yourself and your business, they're able to verify that right away. Uh, through your account. So it, it can uh, very much help with your search visibility, not only for your Google Plus page, but for your website. And then there's also this um, very large maps and local businesses side of Google. Uh, the, the Google Maps um, local search results that you see with the map and the pinpoints coming up, that was recently rolled into Google Plus. So now your Google Plus page is essentially that same page that shows up in Google Maps. So you can imagine uh, the implications of that for somebody doing a local search, either from their mobile phone or, or with the uh, keyword you know, intended for your local city. Uh, another example, again, uh, Google Plus, the Dolan Law Firm. Uh, you can see the About section has uh, information about their hours, about the firm. You can see that they have 31 plus ones. They have the link to their website, which, again, helps their website show up in Google Search. And they're participating also in the circling feature. Uh, similar to how Twitter, you can follow people and have people follow you. So tying it all together in the end, um, it may seem a little daunting at first if you haven't done this before, uh, either for yourself or your business, thinking about going into 
uh, four different properties and posting in four different places. So the, the advice here is to be efficient. You want to tie all your social media accounts together using a dashboard. There's a number of dashboards out there uh, where you can essentially post once and have it show up um, on all your accounts. So it increases your efficiency. You don't have to log into all of your accounts every time. And then you can get data and information fed back to you through your dashboard to help understand what's going on on your social media pages and on the web for that matter. You can then use that data to incentivize yourself uh, to create your posting schedule. If there's a certain posting style or content people really liked, you can um, hone in on that using this data that comes back through the dashboard and then tailor uh, your posting or your content schedule based on that. And essentially, um, Mark talked about the blog sort of being the original form of social media. A blog is an excellent way to power ongoing social media posts. So it sort of uh, lays a foundation, sort of step one in your social media um, sort of uh, setup and campaign, get that blog going, get those blog posts flowing out to your social media properties. And then um, on top of that, go and interact and engage like we've been talking about really uh, helps uh, back up uh, your expertise and your relevance within that topic area. So finally, just a quick um, snapshot of one example of a social media uh, manager dashboard. This is the dashboard our customers use at Fine Law, uh, specifically tailored for attorneys and law firms. You can see at the top we have our reach and engagement scores. And then with the, within the summary page, you can see we're giving you targets uh, that are realistic for law firms. Uh, not so much for restaurants or concert venues, uh, but more realistic for the type of law firms that we work with. You can track all of your information and then dive into that um, individually.